This lesson will be talking about the Google Hacking Database. Several years ago, a guy by the name of Johnny Long put this Google Hacking Database together to begin to compile a list of searches that would bring up interesting information. Johnny has also written a couple of books on Google Hacking. So we're at the Google Hacking Database website here, and you can see them talk about Google dorks, and there is a list here of the latest Google Hacking entries, and they also have a number of categories that you can look through to find some specific things that you may be interested in. Of course, you can also search specific information that you may be looking for with regards to a specific product, for example, like here's one on Joomla. There's also information about files containing usernames. This is always interesting. You don't necessarily get the passwords here, but a username can sometimes get you a foothold into some password cracking attempts. You can do some brute force checking, and you can see here it talks about the type of search it is and what it reveals, and you can just click here on the Google search and it will actually bring up Google with the list of responses that Google generates. So let's look at this one here. The file type is log and the username is putty. And this is information about an SSH client. And let's see what we can bring up here. So here's a putty log. You can see they're using username ec2-user. So they're logging into an Amazon Linux system which it says right here in the middle, although EC2 is the product that Amazon uses for some of their cloud computing. And if we continue to scroll down, there's a lot of interesting information in here. So somehow somebody's got a putty log that has logged a lot of information and they've just got it up on a website. So looking through a little bit more, we can see a number of other things. There's vulnerable servers which can bring up interesting information about specific server types. Here's one here, find servers vulnerable to the CVE 2007-5423 exploit. So you can find servers that are vulnerable to specific exploits. If you were looking to see if your client, for example, may have a server that's vulnerable, you may want to do that type of search. Error messages are really interesting. They often provide, as this says here, way too much information. And let's just bring up one of these searches just for fun. We're going to look for some PHP data. And as we've mentioned before, sometimes you're not going to always get everything that's a hit. Sometimes it requires a little bit more. And we have some information on this website. There's a warning about this particular PHP page. And we've also got information here about a directory and a path on the system that may provide us some information. There are a number of other categories here. Files containing passwords, files containing juicy information, networker vulnerability data. Various online devices are interesting because you may end up being able to find things like cameras or, in this case, here's a Beyond TV. You can get surveillance video, more or less what this one here is, Spectra IV IP. And here's a website that's got a camera. And in this case, it's taking some time for the video to load, or there may be a problem with the QuickTime stream. I can, however, take a snapshot and then open it up. And there's the snapshot so you can see that the video is actually working. So a number of categories that they've classified things into advisories and vulnerabilities, pages containing login portals. But what this really has is a list of queries that you may be able to use as you're going through a penetration test. So the Google Hacking Database, definitely a website to put into your bookmarks and check in with on a regular basis as you're working with your clients and doing ethical hacking and penetration testing.